Hey, it's Heidi Rain. Welcome back to another episode of Addiction and Codependency Breakthrough. I am so glad you're here. We are going to talk about one of the most widely misunderstood concepts on the planet, and that is the issue of codependency. Is it love or is it codependency? Am I addicted to this dynamic or do I really love this person genuinely? Why is that so important to figure out? Because one is pure. One is going to serve you. The path of love is going to serve you. It's going to light you up. It's going to bring you joy. It's going to expand you as a human being. And the other one is going to suck you dry. It is going to deplete you. It's going to leave you feeling exhausted, overwhelmed, like you're like you have nothing, a shell of yourself. It's going to feel like you've lost yourself. So one feels really good and one feels really bad. And wouldn't it be awesome to know which path you're on before you walk another day down it. Amen. All right. So I'm going to give you that today. Now, if you're new here, I do want to take a minute and say, man, am I glad you found me. This is a really big place on the YouTubes and the podcast. And so I believe you're here for a reason. I believe if you found me, you're definitely here for a reason, the right reason. And whatever that reason is, I'm so glad. And my prayer is that I provide you with something you needed to hear today, something you needed to see, a perspective shift, a new way to think or feel about something so that you can ultimately break free. And what we do here, what our main goal is, is to become a cycle breaker. We want to break free from any codependency patterns or habits or ways of being that are inhibiting us and preventing us from having the lo true love and true happiness that we really deserve. Now, it's not our fault. These codependency patterns develop way early when the path gets laid with our attachments, uh, how we're going to connect and how we get love. And for many of us who were born into families of dysfunction, it was how to survive this thing. How am I going to get my needs met or be okay in this crazy dynamic. If you grew up in addiction or if you are affected or impacted by another's addiction, you're especially in the right place because my super niche, <laughs> I, I already have this umbrella. Of, I'm an expert in codependency, but I've super niched into addiction and codependency, meaning uh, codependency is really at the root of most people's addiction issues. I believe it's an attachment issue. And also, it's certainly at the root of our relationships with addicts and alcoholics. Most times, our codependency is running the show there. So I figured the most practical way I could lay this out for you today is just to riff, is just to share with you some very like distinct ways that codependency and love differ uh, so that you can see yourself. Now, this is going to be a lot today. This is going to be certainly, I'm going to give you like eight different ways, uh, eight different, eight differences between codependency and love. And if you're curious, if you are codependent and you, you really want to just, you know, figure that out once and for all, I did create a test for you. And I've actually created eight different codependent attachment personality patterns. And you can go over to Heidi Rain and take that assessment right now. It's, it's a deep assessment. It's legitimate. It takes about 10 minutes. It's not like which Disney princess am I or which flavor coffee uh, am I? It's what flavor of codependency do I have? So it does take about 10 minutes to take that test, but it's 10 minutes to get radical insight into yourself and and people that you love, I mean, that's that's worth the investment of your time for sure. And that's at HeidiRain.com. So the first thing that we're going to look at is when we talk about codependency is really we have to look at our agenda because sometimes you could be doing something and you think you're doing it out of love and it's a loving way. But if we dive a little bit deeper under the surface, we see that it's actually a kind of an attempt I was going to say kind of a lame attempt because it's our best attempt. It's not working though, to really get love and to connect with uh, the people that we want to connect with. But it's actually having the opposite effect. It's actually disconnecting us. It's making us further and further apart. And it's kind of a parody of connection. Codependency is, it's not really uh, authentic, deep, abiding, uh, you know, lasting affection. Uh, it's just a parody of that. And so one of the first things we're going to discuss and how you know it could be codependency and not love is that there's an element of control. Now, anytime you're in a relationship where there's an element of control, 
either somebody is controlling you with what uh, they want you to think or feel or how you should behave or they're the mood police or the emotion police or the thought police or the behavior police or you are acting as that in your relationship and you notice you start to get tense around other people wondering what are they going to say what are they going to do now you could be interrupting me i actually heard it i heard you interrupt me right now in this middle of this sentence by saying to me heidi if i don't interrupt them and i don't take control of the situation, bad things are going to happen. They're going to embarrass themselves and they're going to embarrass me. And so, yes, I get that. And I understand. And control is a form of codependency where I'm trying to prevent bad things from happening. I'm trying to avoid that bad thing, but I'm doing it through trying to manipulate you and control you versus what, what does love do? Love actually allows the natural consequence of things. Love allows things to unfold. Love doesn't uh, dictate. Love creates a sense of freedom where I'm free to be myself. You're free to be yourself. Now, if you, you might be thinking, well, if I don't control who they are, I don't like who they are. Then that's not love. That's codependency. (laughs) If there's an element of, if I, if I can't be in control of you, uh, then I, I can't love you. That's an anxious attachment. You know, the need to control is a very anxious attachment and this controlling codependent is a very anxiously attached person. You're just afraid that something bad is going to happen if you don't, if you don't keep your grips in. Like, have you ever been on the other side of that? I mean, imagine, I know growing up, I had a very controlling environment where it's like, I couldn't breathe the wrong way. You know how that feels, right? When you're constantly under condemnation and criticism and you can't make any kind of moves. You know, I asked my daughter the other day, who's turned eight, and I ask her this periodically, just because I want to know, uh, how do you feel loved? You know, at this at this stage of your life, how do you feel most love? And and she actually said this time as an eight year old, I feel most love, mommy, when I'm understood, when I'm seen and understood, meaning like accepted, right? And you get me, this kind of feeling like, hey, you get me. And that's exactly what love is. Love is like, I get you and I accept that about you. So if there's an element of control, it's codependency, not love. Now, again, you can fight me on this in the comments. You can ask questions about this in the comments and I'm happy to break it down. But inside of our course is where we really dive deep into each in our codependency breakthrough course is where we dive deep into each one of these personality patterns and help undo the programming that sets you up for this pattern in the first place. So you can break free and be a cycle breaker for good for the rest of your life. Okay. So codependency, another, uh, the second example is codependency performs. And what I mean is if there's any element of pretending or putting on a show or poor performing in any way, shape or form in your relationship, then that is an, that's an element of a codependent connection. Now you might say, well, I perform at work. You know, I put on my good face and I put on my, you know, and I, I, and that's true. We are kind of characters in a play of our life and we go to work and we perform and we put on this hat and then we, you know, take it off and we do our gym and we do our Zumba or if you're me, you do your Zumba and you perform in your Zumba and you do the best job you can. So I'm not saying there's no element of wanting to put your best foot forward, but when it becomes codependent is when you know you're living a lie. It is when you are having an element of self-betrayal. You are doing things in your relationship you do not want to be doing. You are uh, pretending like you're fine with things you are not fine with. And this could show up in multitude of ways. You're not radically transparent and honest about uh, your intimacy. You're not radically transparent about how another person's behavior is impacting and affecting you. And instead of having those hard conversations, you're pretending and sucking it up and putting your big girl pants on, you know, all the stupid things we learned, I learned as a kid that you're supposed to do, suck it up, pretend like, you know, suck it up, buttercup. Uh, But the reality is love allows deep vulnerability. There is no pretending in a, in, a, in a true, authentically loving relationship. It is a level of transparency. I don't need to perform for you. In fact, if I'm not in the mood for certain things, or if I have a, an opinion or idea about something, I'm free to be vulnerable and share with you how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking at all times. 
Uh, but there's an element of, if, if you see this about me, you're not going to love me anymore. So I'm going to pretend there was this movie. I can't remember what it was with the, the 27 dresses. I think it was where one of the characters was like pretending to be somebody she wasn't in order to get the guy. And I know a lot of us have done that at least one time in our lives, but if we're in this long-term committed dynamic and you're, 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 there's one thing, like put your best foot forward. It's another thing to pretend to be a whole different human being you know, uh, performing and pretending. And so if you're, if you can resonate with that at all, you're putting on a show in any way, shape or form, that is codependency. That is not love. Love is authentic. Love is just what it is. Uh, the good, the bad and the ugly and all of it. Now, does that mean that you should accept all that? No, we're going to get to that point. <laughs> okay. But we're the first thing we're learning to do when we're breaking free from codependency is learning how to be more of our authentic selves. So the third thing that codependency does is it is it plays the victim. Now there's a big difference. Uh, they it victimizes, okay, and villainizes instead of and blames. Uh, codependency blames it. It manipulates this way. It acts like it it has no power. Like it, it it's the victim of somebody else's circumstance. Where love is ownership and responsibility. It's agency over myself. And so there's a big difference between being a true victim, which many of us are. I'm a victim of many things in my life. And I and I know you are too, or you probably wouldn't be here. To tell you the truth, most of us that are here end up here because of some form of complex post-traumatic stress, okay? Or some form of childhood trauma that enacts this codependency chip in the first place and creates it, the attachment issues. But I think that the victim mentality is a little bit different where yes, those bad things happen to us, right? And we are uh, affected and impacted by all the things that have happened in our lives, but we don't continue to use that as a reason not to take accountability and responsibility for our lives. So if there's any kind of victim dynamic where you're helpless and it's all in the hands of somebody else or they're helpless and it's all in the hands of you, that is a codependent relationship. That is not love. That is codependence. Love gives responsibility. Love is free will. Love is full agency over ourselves and our domain. And the best thing, I mean, the most loving thing we can do is to help somebody be self-sufficient, right? And to realize their self-potential and their fullest potential. So, but the victim is a very codependent dynamic that just stays in that victim role long after that trauma has has, has happened um, and will continue to ruminate on it and bring it up over and over again. Um, here's one that's really interesting. And this is probably the one that most of the people that I help and work with identify with the most. Codependency fixes and love allows and accepts. Okay. So if you're in a dynamic at all where you are running to the rescue, you're the hero, you're Wonder Woman, you're putting on your cape. In fact, let me just grab here some props for you. Yes, I am. If you're watching this video, yes, I did just get up and you could see my little leather fanny pack. I don't know. It's a thing. So here are my Wonder Woman cuffs. Okay. So, you know, and I love Wonder Woman and grew up. This is why I probably have these accoutrements right up my ready. Okay. So we are born into a dynamic that's dysfunctional, especially if you have alcoholism in your dynamic and you could start to like fantasize and become like, you're the superhero. Lots of the people that I work with are nurses, doctors, therapists, coaches, psychologists, you know, have a fascination with psychology and fixing and helping people and things like that. The problem is, is when we want to take this superpower that we have developed, which is a great thing, right? Your ability to help people. And we want to take it into our relationships and we want to get with people that are broken and dysfunctional and fix them. Now, I know I'm singing your song. Okay. You're like, oh no, I think this is me. Well, you can go take the test over at HeidiRain.com to make sure. Uh, but yeah. If there's any element of fixing, like I'm going to do my project, I'm going to take you under my wing and polish you up and return you back and fix your wings and put you back into the world and fly, birdie, fly. That's a codependent dynamic. You know, there's nothing to be fixed. And honestly, man, could I go very deep on this because we have set up this dynamic, even with religion to begin with this codependent dynamic with God, I'm broken and you fix me. But when God was walking the earth and teaching taught us you're whole, you're not broken. You just have to wake up. 
and realize that you're one with God. And that's all the teachings. That's what I believe. That's what all the teachings are. It's not a brokenness in us, but we have that dynamic and set up from generation to generation to generation that the most loving thing you can do is be like Jesus and fix people. But Jesus doesn't fix anybody. He turns the lights on. Okay. And themselves. <laughs> all right. So or he just holds the space, you know what I mean? So it's not about us fixing people uh, in our intimate relationships. It's about providing surrender and acceptance. And that's what makes somebody feel the most love. It's like, I accept you no matter what. I'm not trying to fix you. I'm not trying to change you. I'm here for you, all of it. Now, I don't mean that you should sign up for that then. Well, okay, if I'm not gonna fix them, I'm with an addict or an alcoholic. Okay, uh, I can't fix them, just love and accept them. But the truth is, is that's where you have to figure out where your code, how deep your codependency goes. You know, is this a pattern that if you pull back from this fixing, you're going to go through withdrawal? What's going to happen when you let go of your control? What's going to happen when you let go of all these things? Those are very real questions. And this is why this is just like a lighthearted discussion about this. But the deep work of untethering and detaching from all this is done inside of my courses and inside of our private uh, and group coaching containers. All right, three more things to talk about. Codependency pleases, not to the level of I want to please my husband and my husband wants to please me and isn't that a beautiful thing. It pleases with an element of fear attached to it, that if I don't please you, you're not going to approve of me, love me, accept me, be with me, et cetera, et cetera. So there's an element of fear attached to the pleasing, where if it's love, I want to please you because it brings a smile to my face and I'm doing it out of love. So I'm doing it because I'm attached to an outcome. I'm going to please you because you're going to do this thing to me. I'm keeping score with you. I'm making, I'm, I'm adding up, you know, how many coins I put in the bucket, you know, in my love bucket. And I'm doing all these kind of mind games with myself and I'm pleasing so that there's an outcome attached to it. And I'm attached to that outcome. Then that is a codependent dynamic. Uh, pleasing is a wonderful thing. Of course, uh, relationships are about coming to somebody to add value. But when there's an element of fear to it, that if I'm not pleasing you all the time and I'm not being my authentic self, and if sometimes I disagree or I don't want to do that thing, or I want to share opinion that differs with you, I keep it all to myself because I don't want to upset you. That is an extremely eggshelly codependent dynamic. Not going to work. Another thing that we don't think about very often, and this is a pattern, one of the patterns that I created or came up with whenever I did start doing all this research for this work, and that is the pattern of withholding. Withholding, when it is done in this way that I'm going to describe, is codependent, not loving. Okay. It's important for us to know how to withhold, right? Withhold from ourselves. That's called self-discipline. Yeah. You know, when it's a healthy withholding, it's called self-discipline. That's a very loving thing. When I have self-discipline for myself, I know how to set the limits and parameters and boundaries. That's self-discipline. Withholding in a codependent dynamic is like a carrot. It's like, I'm going to withhold this from you for one reason. You're going to do what I want and then I'll give it to you. Or I'm going to use it as a stick. A punishment. It's a stick or a carrot. I'm going to punish you because you didn't do what I want you to do. So I'm going to withhold my affection, attention, approval, my feelings. I'm going to withhold from you, or I'm going to give it, to, I'm going to withhold it from you as like a reward. I'll give it to you. If you dance, if you do the thing I want you to do, you know, dance monkey, you know, do, do whatever I want you to do. be the circus monkey, you know, uh, that's your symbols and here's the prize. So this pattern sounds pretty malicious, but it's really, it's a very common pattern for people that have strong emotions, have strong feelings, but the codependency flavor that they have is I don't want to be hurt by you. So I'm going to withhold, I'm going to withhold my emotions and keep everything in kind of like a pretender, but a pretender is a little different in, in a couple of different ways. And I don't have the time to get into it today, but if you take the test, you'll be able to know at HeidiRain.com. But this withholding is a little bit more, um, on a level of self-protection. I don't want to give to you all my love because what's going to happen if the shoe drops again? I don't want to give you my love because then you're going to think what you did a month ago was okay and it's not. And I want you to connect those dots. And so as we move deeper into our understanding of these patterns, we're able to see just how deep it goes. And it does go very deep. And the last one is love, codependency clings. Codependency clings and love lets go. 
Okay. So if you're in a relationship where you feel like you have to be attached all the time, you have to spend a certain amount of time together or see each other a certain amount of time. So A, you know what the heck's going on with that person or B, so they don't forget about you or start wanting somebody else or so that you, you know, if there's trust issues along with that, if you feel like you can't be alone and you need to be with that person all the time because you feel anxious when they're not with you, that again is another sign and symptom of a codependency, a codependent relationship versus a loving relationship. So I've given you a lot in just this little session, but it's just a taste. It's just a nibble of, of each personality pattern. And if you want to go deep into your own, go over to HeidiRain.com, take the personality attachment test that I created, the codependent attachment personality pattern test and see which one you are. And then shoot me an email after you take that assessment and ask me, Hey, this is the test result I got. You know, what's a, what's a good step for me? Do you have a video for me? Do you have a suggestion? Can you tell me about your course, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll be happy to support you. Okay. I love you. Uh, if codependency is something you're ready to break free from, if you, if you decided you want to become a cycle breaker, I've got you. I've got you. I've dedicated my whole entire life to this very purpose and you deserve it. And so does the next generation. All right. So let's heal one decision at a time. And the first decision is to go over to HeidiRain.com and take that test. Do it. All right. Love you. Talk to you really soon. Take excellent care. Bye-bye.